Hello, hello! Welcome to my paddle brush collection video. If you saw the 23 second one, ignore that one. I forgot that I wasn't mic'd up correctly. So now that I am, let's start with these brushes. So these are all synthetic brushes for shading and to an extent blending. So this is the most unique one I have. This is this sort of flat top shape, flared out. And this is by Smith's Cosmetics. This is a, they describe it as a finishing brush and I use it as an overall blending brush. So if I'm trying to blend out a large area, like I do a very pulled out smoky wing, this is what I use this brush for. It's not super versatile, but it's unique enough that I'm going to keep it in my collection. The hair looks like pine or Canadian squirrel, but they say that it's a synthetic mongoose. And I don't know what mongoose fur feels like, but this is pretty soft. You can hear a bit of the snap not super strong but it is very nice at just moving shadow around and then it has that nice little slip, slip cover there and then we have some flat shader brushes so these two by Sigma look like the same build I vastly prefer this one this is the E55 this is just a shade this is by Pract which is a Sigma sister brand same size shape and build but I much prefer this one because it just moves better. Like this one, it's almost too flexible at the tip. I can't really explain it. So this one just feels like it's more firm, more resilient, and I have more control with it. So, but this one is extremely cheap. It's like seven bucks or something like that. So up to you. I think this one's still under 20 though. And then I have the Urban Decay Moon Dust Brush. This is the E210. This is what I use for glittery pressed pigments and also glittery loose pigments after I get it wet. Take this brush where I get the brush damp and then I kind of press this into the shadow, wiggle it around, pick it up, and smear it on my eye. But I don't really like the hair on this one as much as I do this one. So this one is going to get de-stashed and this one's probably going to be given away as a gift probably to my sister after I'm done doing a comparison video on the Pract brushes with their equivalents to the Sigma brushes. So next up, kind of also in the building shading brush category. So these brushes are for really packing on color. I would say the same is true for the next series of brushes I'm going to show you. So this is the Sonia G Flat Definer from the Kayaki series. Very tiny little Psycho goat brush here. Very fine tip. It's great for smudging and just painting on color in a tight area. So I like to paint on color underneath my uh, eyelid crease. This is great for it. I use the Urban Decay Shadow Primer as my sort of painted base. And this does a wonderful job painting it on. And it's also very easy to clean. It washes stark white. And then most of the time with like little brushes like this, I worry about color getting caught here, being difficult to wash up. That hasn't been the case with this brush, which I'm very pleased with. And then sort of a bigger version of that, again, you still have, you have this flat shape with a defined point. This is the Builder One. The only thing I don't like about this brush is that the handle is so fat but it's a great brush again for packing on color the tip is fairly flexible so you'd think a brush like this would be really stiff because it's so thick but the tips because of that taper are really flexible and pleasant on the skin it's good at smudging eyeshadow or smudging pencil out pretty indispensable brush if you like packing on uh, color really strongly so that's opaque and shows like it does in the pan also really great for, um, what's it called? Foiling shadows, where you get the brush stamp, pick up pigment and then smear it on and make it as shiny and metallic as possible. And again, a great one for loose glitter pigment. This is what I previously used for that uh, function before I got the Builder One. This is the Medium Eyeshadow E207 by Urban Decay. I will be de-stashing this one even though it has this filbert shape and this pointed shape I really like because I have this one as a smaller hair 
sip substitute for those functions. But it's also really similar to the Smashbox 5. This is the Precision Concealer brush from their original brush line when they were still manufactured by um, Japan. Although this one is actually made in China, they moved the production. Anyways, the shape of this one is super versatile. Or the shape of these, rather, is super versatile. You can use the surfaces for painting on color, putting on concealer, and you can use the tip and the sides for precision work. Like, look how fine that tip is. I can actually use this for a winged liner. So I'll be de-stashing this one. And then I'll be keeping these two because I'm greedy and I don't want to let them go. These are after they moved the production out of Japan and made them in China. But they're still great quality. And then lastly, we have this Surratt brush. This is the Perfectionist Complexion brush, which is still that sort of acorn shape but we're starting to get a little fatter on the sides now, which means when we put color on like this, you see that tip spread? That means we get a little bit more blending action in and it looks a little bit more diffuse and less like a big line. This one, I lumped it with this brush because it's technically a complexion, AKA concealer brush, but it also works as an eye brush, albeit a large eye brush. So moving into those large eye brushes of the acorn shapes, this is the Hokoto WS1. I am heartbroken that this brush is no longer available and has been discontinued. Because of that diamond shape on the side and this tip shape here, it's super versatile. Even though it's a large eye brush, I can do one whole look with it because I have a large surface here like this for laying down base, a medium surface for laying down a lid color, and then a very fine tip for doing small surface area work. I love this brush. If I was to make a brush or come up with a brush line, this would be one of the brushes and one of the shapes I would do for sure. I don't know why Hokoto discontinued the white pearl, but it's really sad that they did. And then moving on to the Kalinsky paddle brushes, which is why I'm sure most of you are here. So, this one is sable, and then I can kind of feel a little bit of a difference between the sable and the Kalinsky, but this one is qu quite good sable, so I can't really tell a difference from the Kalinsky. Okay, so nothing else in my collection is really like this shape. But I do have similar in sizes and actually some that are a little bigger. I would say this is about a size 10. My size 12 brushes are here, here, and here. So size 12 brushes are quite large, but that's only measuring the ferrule. They also have things to account for like the shape of it and how much hair they contain. So you can see if these two, they contain far different amounts of hair even though they're both size 12 and they have completely different tip shapes. This one's pointed and this one's round. So starting with the Takeda 12, this one I featured in my Kolinsky eye brushes video. And again, we have this super versatile brush despite its large size. This is the Takeda 12 Pure Red Sable, but Christy20 on Instagram has confirmed that sizes zero through nine are Sable Weasel and Sizes 10 and above through 15 are Kolinsky. So back to the fact that this is great for laying down base because of that big spread. And you can see it really hugs around curves. So the tips are quite flexible on this brush. I have a medium size here. And in my Kolinsky eye brush video, I actually demo using this tip to draw on wing liner because you can have so much control and finesse because of the Kalinsky fibers in this brush. Slightly less versatile, this is the Tanzedo 12. This is the, I believe, the KQ12. Oh no, yes, this is the KQ12, and in my version is the engraved lace version. So, if we go back to the tip shape, you can see there's a difference in how sharply the tips taper. 
This one will be slightly less versatile. You'll probably have to pull out a small brush, like say the Kiyaki, to really do some detail work. But it's still a great one over brush to have. And both of these are great for under eye concealer because you can really pat it on and blend it seamlessly into the rest of your foundation. Or if under eye concealer is the only thing you wear, it's ideal for that as well. So between these two, I do prefer the Takeda simply because it can do more. The Tanzedo is kind of in between this brush and the Shu Uramura 12, which I will get to in a second. And I have two Evgeny large uh, sable eye brushes. These are made of Russian sable and they have ebony wood handles. So here you can really see the handmade nature of the brushes. They're a little bit different in tip shape. But nothing too drastic. They pretty much still apply eyeshadow the same way. And here it is compared to the Tanzedo. It's a little bit fatter and has less of that diamond taper than the Tanzedo has. This one even less so. So out of these, I will be de-stashing one of them and keeping the other one because it is a really nice brush with that nice weighty handle compared to say this one, which is quite light. And then we have the indispensable shoe 12. This one is indispensable because of that thickness of the hair. So let's, let's see that side by side. You can see how the tip is so much fuller and rounder. And this is really great for power blending and also because of that rounded tip when you apply a shadow to your crease or on the edge of another existing color you get a much softer gradient well whereas with this one you actually have to lick more to blend this one you kind of pat it down and it blends for you because of that rounded edge this one does take more work but this is more of a layering brush if that makes any sense this is the faster brush and that's probably why the Hugh brushes are sought all over because of a tip shape and just how they're built. This is the Koyudo BP027 in a special edition. This has like micro green shimmers uh, in, built into the handle and this brush is quite fat for a Kalinsky paddle. And it functions quite the same way as the Shoe 12 does. So this one is a power blender for sure. And it's not quite as versatile because you can see the tip is more squared off versus this one's more round, like a tongue. So this one's more like applying shadow with your fingers. And this one has slightly less precision, but it makes a great one for laying down base. And of course, blending that shadow out. You can see the flex in the tip. And the flex in the tip here, you can see how this one just covers more and just moves more. So that's the difference between the thickness of the builds plus the tip shape. And then this is the FQ10. This is made of Fitch. I don't like it, it's very scratchy to me if I use it perpendicularly, uh, which I do sometimes do. Maybe, maybe this is just a weird one. Like if I stroke it, yes, it feels very silky, but once in a while I go into my eye too fast and I kind of jab it in like that and um, it doesn't feel pleasant. So uh, this one is very similar to this one in shape, you can see that tip has that really cut diamond tip to the taper. And it is very versatile. I just don't find it particularly pleasant. So that's why this one is going. This is my only Fitch brush and I kind of don't want to let it go simply because I want a hair comparison sample. So we shall see if anyone <laughs> bites and picks this up for my blog sale after I'm done roasting it. And then this is a Makeup Cat Sable Eye Brush. And I was actually quite surprised by how this sable, good this sable feels. It's softer than a Fitch, but it's, um, it's quite large 
on the feral size, but what's surprising is how short the bristles are. It behaves almost like one of these brushes that are much shorter and wider. That's just how it applies color. I'm not sure why. I got it hoping it would be a dupe for the Shu Uramura 10 Kolinsky Sable. But as you can see, the Shu Uramura has longer hair, so it's not a dupe. I've had fun playing with this brush for quite a while, so I am going to let it go. And then now we move into the size 10 brushes, or approximately 10 size brushes. And then these were all covered in my um, video on Kalinsky hair eye brushes. So if you want something more in depth on these brushes, <coughs> sorry, definitely go check out that video. So let's compare apples to apples. <coughs> sorry, he went down the wrong way. So this is a Shu Uramar 12. And this is the Shu Uramar 10. And this is the new Shu Uramar 10. So Kolinsky Sable, Kolinsky Sable, Synthetic, uh, the synthetic one is still made in Japan, so you can see the size difference between the 10 and the 12 here. And this one is less of a blender mover straight application brush. So we have a nice medium surface for applying eyeshadow, and then because of that taper here, you can kind of use it, that taper as in the round taper here, you can kind of use it more sideways to apply shadow in this diagonal stroke motion, to really blend out the edges or blend areas together, and then use that tip to smudge stuff. And then the 10 is just a super versatile brush. Mine is super beat up. You can see this discoloration. Uh, that's because this brush is over 10 years old and that's black nail polish I painted on because <laughs> the wood color was showing through and the ferrule fell off at one point, so I re-glued it back on. So I figured, uh, let's just get the synthetic brush and see how they compare. So I will be doing a comparison video where I demonstrate the same eyeshadow look applied on one eye with this brush and one eye with this brush. And I will also be applying with the closest dupe I found to the Shu Urmar 10. This is the Bishyoto. So these two Bishyoto brushes have the same brush head. This is the BES06. This is the BSES05. So B for Bishyoto, ES eyeshadow 06. BS Bishyoto short, ES eyeshadow 05. So these have the closest brush head that I've found to the Shu 10. And you can check out more of that on the I uh, Kalinsky about Kalinsky hair brush eye brush video I have. You can see build is very very similar down to the tip width and the thickness. So this is the best bet you're gonna get. The sable content in this brush does make the hairs a little bit lighter, but functionally they're pretty close. So these brushes are the same. I will be destashing the short one because. I don't need that many sable brushes. I think I do, but I actually don't. And these are brushes I thought would be similar to the Shoe 10. They weren't. So this one's thinner, fatter, and the tip is more fluffy, which makes it a good application brush. But it's the sable of this one doesn't quite compare to the Kalinsky and sable mix of the Shoe 10. So I will be letting this one go. This is the ESAM W23. And then compared to the Hokoto WS5, this one is very nice, but it is one of the stiffer Kalinsky brushes I have. So if you see this one, you can see how much I can flex the tip and get that surface area to spread. And then this one, it doesn't really spread as much, even though it flexes about the same. So this one, doesn't have the spread because it's not very thick on the side. So let's compare. So you can see the spread here like that and the spread here like that. These are pretty comparable, but the um, 06 
the, the Shiodo 06 is closer because it has more rounded shape, while this one has a more squared off shape com in comparison. I don't know how well that's translating on camera, but it's really evident to the eye. And then I have a bunch of brushes under here, so I'm going to move my impromptu filming stand really quickly and get those brushes out. I didn't think this through very well, did I? I just grabbed books behind me and started building my stand so the camera would be closer to the brushes. So this is a Giorgio Armani Pony eyeshadow hairbrush and I kind of had it included with the other ones because it's kind of got that same shape where it's very thin on the side and it tapers to a tip. I've really been impressed with this brush. Like it is great. And because it's pony, it can do everything Kolinsky can do. I think it's pretty soft. And even if I jab it perpendicularly into my eyes, I can only feel a couple hairs poking me. I really do like this brush. It's a bit more expensive for what it is, which is horse, not soft, fine goat, but I like it a lot. So I keeps. And then now we move into the cute little tiny brushes. So this is the Takeda Red Sable 8. So again, the brushes one through nine are Red Sable and the brushes 10 through 15 are Kolinsky. This one is a little bit fluffy at the tip, which makes it really nice for applying eyeshadow and then licking, blending it into the next color. So you get a really nice seamless blend. It's also good for smudging out liner, even though this one is a little less precise about it. So you get a thicker smudger line better for smoky eyeshadow. That is in comparison to the Koyudo BP038. This one has a razor thin tip and I actually use this one more for eyeliner and lip liner and uh, lipstick application than I do use it for eyeshadow. Because if you can hear the snap, it's, it's pretty extreme. So this one's quite stiff versus a little bit softer. So they're both small eye brushes and they both serve different purposes because the tips are different. Don't know how well you can see that. And then we have the soft ones. We have this little Hokodo brush. I mean Hak Hokodo, there we go. There. Hakuhodo brush. Let me see what code number this is. This is from the Autumn Collection 2000, uh, 2017. Uh, no wait, 2018 Smoky Eye Makeup Set. And this is, oh, no, that's not right. I have Blue Squirrel on there. That's not right. Oops. Okay, I have no idea what this is. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> so, it's a nice brush. I'm keeping it. It's a detailed eye brush. And I'm not sure this exists in the regular collection. And then this is the BP039, and it's made of tamage, which is apparently a type of cat. And I'm not sure why this material isn't more used, because it's very, very soft. It's got a little bit more spring than a squirrel brush of the equivalent build, but it's very, it's very nice for smudging out color. I haven't used it for smudging out pencil, because I prefer not to do it with cream and sort of wet liquid products, but if you do find one secondhand, or if you find that CD Japan restocks it, I highly recommend picking up one of these brushes. And it's super nice. And out of all of these small eye brushes, I am keeping all of them because I'm greedy. Now we're moving on to still small eye brushes, but less small. I have surprisingly few of these. So this is the Chikohodo Noel collection from 2014. This is Canadian Squirrel. 
And we've got this nice little tapered tip here that allows you to draw, but because of that flex, you don't get a lot of precision with it, which makes it good for just soft layering shadow. I wouldn't use this for doing anything strong because it's a little not controllable enough for that, as you can see. This is the Surat Classic Eye Brush. Um, I think this is the medium size. I'm pretty sure this is a medium size, but it's quite small. So as you can see, small eye brush, kind of small eye brush. They're calling it medium. This one is more firm and stands up to eyeshadow better. If you have a, only a little bit of lid space, this medium eyeshadow from Surat is a good eye brush to handle all of your needs. And then what I consider to be more true medium eye brushes are these guys. So here's the size difference between medium versus medium. So the purple one is a Koyudo eye brush. This is the BP033. It's an OEM version they made with a purple handle. And it's a really lovely medium sized brush. They don't make the BP033 anymore. But again, if you find that they restock it, I would definitely get it. And then here's the Koyomo flat eye brush. This is Ototsuho. And it's a really great brush. I just love it. So both of these brushes have this build where it's kind of a little bit thick and fluffy. But it has this tapered tip here that allows you to apply shadow kind of precisely and then blend it out and it just gives you a beautiful finish and if you only use two colors for your eyeshadow this medium size is really this medium size especially if this taper tip is really lovely for doing it so definitely one of the brushes i recommend this is a more expensive version of the gradation handle it comes in a basic pink nadeshiko pink pearl handle as well for half the price so that's the basic set, but it's very pretty. So pick that up. I just got this in the gradation handle because I already own the pink pearl handle. And I've definitely fig picked, uh, bit, uh, featured that brush before. So we're going from the sort of medium thick paddles to the thin paddles. And then so medium size thick paddle to medium size thin paddle. This is the Hakuhodo Ogi. We're going to com be comparing it to, surprisingly, a lot of other Hakuhodo brushes. So let me look at my spreadsheet to make sure I have the code names for these right. This is the Hakuhodo uh, 2017 Ogi Subomi Eyeshadow. So there's the Maru, which is rounder, and the Subomi, which means bud. In the permanent collection, this would be the F8431. And because of the shape of this, you can apply shadow with the big side, but you turn it around and it's got this extremely fine tip that you can use for lining your eyes. It's incredible, this shape. And the only thing that's really missing is like a medium surface. But if you can see that I'm kind of using this brush at a slant and using diagonal motions, that gives me the medium surface I need to make this a one shadow eye brush. So uh, let me check the code again. F8431 would be the permanent line code of this. And this is Blue Squirrel, but it's very snappy for Blue Squirrel. You can see how quickly that reacts and goes back to its original shape. And that's because of how they crimp it at the ferrule. Unfortunately, Hakuhodo has discontinued their Canadian squirrel eye brushes, but this one, the bead 127, has that tongue shape I really like because you can just kind of lick color on. You really have control over how much surface area you want to use. Canadian squirrel is a hair that I'm definitely afraid is going to go extinct, or at least not, not the squirrels go extinct, Canadian squirrel brushes will go extinct. So definitely pick them up while you can. Um, you can't get these anymore, the B127 and the S133, which is slightly smaller and more rounded. It has less dramatic of a cut at the tip. But these, same deal. Get a big surface area, I'm sorry, medium surface area, and then a small surface area using just a tip. It's really, really nice. 
Moving on to this also discontinued Koyuta brush. This is the Pine Squirrel, what are you? Pine Squirrel B032. Um, I can feel a little bit more friction when I drag it across the skin compared to Canadian Squirrel, but to me it doesn't feel less soft. Like I've definitely seen Pine Squirrel being used for cleansing brushes before, so I do believe that Pine Squirrel can be used with cream and other wet or thicker liquid textures. I've never tried it, but I am I have a small nose pore cleansing brush made of pine squirrel. And it's really soft, but quite resilient as well. You can see the spring back. It goes back to shape immediately after I remove my finger running it through. I'm keeping this one. So now we have the big eye brushes. So I kind of have these split into two groups, not just because of the material difference, but also because of the shape difference just a little bit. So these two from the Koyudo collection, this is the Koyudo Sakura Radin uh, four-piece set, the large eye brush, and this is the Momoji, um, these maple leaves handles with a red, eye, red squirrel head. So these are quite thin. They're almost like the scaled up version of this type of brush. So again, despite its large size, it's really quite versatile. And you're starting to see a trend of all the brushes I like and the reason why I have them. Versatile because you can use that large surface versus that medium surface versus just the tip for a small surface. Can't quite use these for liner like you can with the Ogi because the tip's not quite fine enough for that. See how bladed and pointed that is? But it's really lovely shadow brush if you're just using, again, just using two colors. This is the, where are you? <laughs> this is the Koyudo B, um, BP029, an OEM version with a black green handle. And you can see the head on the O29 is thicker and fluffier than the uh, Sakura Radin, and that's why I will be keeping both. I did briefly consider de sashing one of them, but when I went to apply eyeshadow, that little bit of difference in thickness did make a difference in the final application of my eyeshadow, as well as sort of this tip shape. You have a more dramatic taper versus a more straight taper. So I will be keeping both of these. <laughs> now moving on to like the fluffy uh, large eye brushes. So here we go. This is the Noel 14 large eye brush made of Canadian squirrel. So you can see the spring back and these are quite comparable because the hair is so thick on these. So if you're miss if you've missed out on the Noel 14, which you probably did because I did too. I bought these from secondhand from a collector and you missed out on the BP029. Out of these brushes I'm about to present to you, these three are still available. They're larger but they function pretty much the same way because they're these thick diamond cut panels. So this is one of my favorite brushes ever, the Hokoto W, uh, no, GS1, the G Gold Series 1, made of Canadian score. I love using this as a face highlight brush for my cheekbones, for my nose and above my eye, but it also makes a great eye brush. It is a bit big. You can see from the spread, quite, quite dramatic if you really press hard. So this will be a base setting brush. So if you get foundation on your eyelids, swipe powder over it, turn it over on the side, you still get quite a large area. And because of that tip, Really the smallest you get area-wise is medium. A little more controllable is the Ihodo S1. And I feel like most people will prefer this brush as an eye brush to the Hokodo brush. This one I just love so much because it's a great highlighter brush. But this one, because it's thinner here and it has this more straight line taper, you get a more true medium surface here. And then the tip here, you get a relatively small medium surface. And then we have the Surat eye brush. This is more like the Hokoda one where it has a very dramatic fluffy 
tip. And depending on which handle you like better, that's pretty much how I would decide. Functionally, they're, they're pretty the same to me. But I am going to be keeping this. Oh, I'm, I am going to be keeping both of these because it's so hard to get Canadian squirrel brushes now because it's just too hard to get, for manufacturers to get a hold of and they can't ensure a consistent supply of Canadian squirrel brushes so they just decide to discontinue them and only make them limited releases. So since the Hokodo and the Surat eye brushes are so large and make good face brushes. I'm going to transition into the next category with this face brush slash eye brush. This is the Shu Uramura 15. It's made of Kolinsky and it's got this dome tip to it. And this is probably excessive for an eye brush. It makes a great under eye powdering brush and makes a fantastic highlight brush and a great contour brush as well in the hollows of the cheeks. And through the nose and orbital socket. Pure luxury in a brush, totally unnecessary, but if you have the spare funds and you find it on eBay, I would pick it up. Definitely not getting rid of this one. Now we move on to the other sort of large eye brushes that I sometimes use as face brushes. So this Chikahodo F05, if you've seen my latest videos, you've probably seen me using this brush some. So this one is great for taking shadows through the socket and you've, because of that spread, it works nice as a nose contour through the eye socket contour brush. Also pretty good for doing the cheeks for a more cut contour look. Same thing with this Kevin Aquan base slash shadow base slash shadow brush. This is made of dyed goat hair. The current version is synthetic. So I don't know how that one functions compared to this one, but you can see that big fat fluffy fluffiness when I press with it. Great for buffing on contour. Like I can apply it and then would say that name is pretty accurate for it. You lay down a sheer amount of color. So the same thing that you would use, say, these brushes for, you use the sheer eye brush for. So again, this one makes a great highlight brush around the face. Notice I didn't say that I use these guys for contour. I don't use this one for contour either because it just doesn't have that big dome shape that makes it ideal for contour because of that taper. Um, contour doesn't really go on so well with this type of pointed tip brush because it takes a lot more to blend it out. This one has enough of a dome shape that it works well for contour. So this one would be too sharp and I have to do extra blending in order to get it to look good. This is the Tanzedo WQ12. It's a large eye brush made of Saikoho. So it has a pretty similar spread to the gray squirrel brush, but because it doesn't have that thickness, it can spread out a lot more if I use a lot more pressure or if I use the same amount of pressure, just more of it. This one is too flimsy for me so I am going to be de-stashing it. If I wanted a flimsy brush or flexible brush I guess I should say I would pick the squirrel brush instead and just use the tip rather than reach for a goat brush. Yes I know the utility of a goat brush in that it can handle textures differently but I find that silver fox at least for me functions more like goat than it does like squirrel. Yes, it feels very soft, like squirrel, but it performs more like goat. So these are redundant enough, and I have uh, enough, I guess, dispassion for this brush that I will be de-stashing it. Big eye brushes aside, and this is where you're going to think I'm nuts. I have three of the same brush. These are all the Sue Devitt's eye base brush and I'm keeping all of them. Why? Because they are fantastic for under eye concealer because of that thick shape. I can just like pat it on, blend it out and it's so effortless. And these are made of Kalinsky. So I can kind of use them with any type of product I want. And they're just great. And they're also great for blending out the edges of eyeshadow and they're soft. If you, again, if you find these on eBay, snap them up. Because if you don't, I might. 
So this is how they compare size-wise to the Kevin and Colin brush. They kind of look the same at first, but they're not. And then we have this uh, Canadian squirrel brush from Girl Story. The actual characters on there are Qin Shua. And this one I was actually really surprised about. It's very soft, very resilient, and very controllable. And if I jab into my eye, it's not inferior quality Canadian squirrel. I can't feel anything individual sticking out and poking me. So this is a really affordable brush, uh, Canadian squirrel brush on Amazon of all places, which is of course where I found it. And it is pretty much the spiritual successor to the Sudevit in shape and thickness. The only place where it doesn't take the place of the Sudevit brush is a little bit in the spring. And the fact that it, this one, of course, being squirrel has less spring than Kalinsky. And the fact that it can't handle concealer. So if this was made of pine squirrel, it'd actually be perfect because I would try pine squirrel with liquid and cream concealer. Canadian Squirrel, I'm a little more hesitant to, but because this brush was so inexpensive, I just might do it when I work up nerve to do it. This one's pretty new, less than a month old in my collection. So we'll report back on this brush eventually. And I have ordered some other brushes from, just two other brushes from this brand to try out because my Saibiko brush is from this brand. So I'm sort of familiar with it. And I'm surprised to see they're still around. They've expanded to Amazon. This is the Smashbox Tapered Shadow Brush. So it's the same idea of this big, fat, fluffy brush. And it just works great. Same thing that I use this for. This one, because it's pony, I do use it with concealer. This one is more for concealing around the nose because I kind of want to really blend out that area. And especially if I have dry flakes around my nose, that pony kind of does good at getting those flakes exfoliated out a little bit without feeling pokey on my skin. This is from the original line when they were still using natural hair, so discontinued. And then in comparison to this Hakuhodo brush, which is also horse, let me find what this Hakuhodo code is. This is the Hakuhodo J127H eyeshadow brush that each standing for I'm going to be destashing the Hakuhodo one and keeping the Smashbox one because the Smashbox one is slightly shorter and also thicker so it's just stronger and it blends better. If I wanted a horse blending brush between these two, I'm keeping this one. I don't need two horse blending brushes. Okay, so other sort of big blending brushes. We have the Sonia G Jumbo Blender haha, from the Kayaki set. And then we have the Worker 1 and Worker 2. So the reason why I have these in the different categories, you can see this one kind of flares out more and then goes back in. This one kind of goes rather than so that's the case for all three of these brushes. Where they differ is that, well, these two are technically the same brush. There's one's just a dyed hair and one's an undyed hair. So where these differ is the tip. So you can see then this one is more tapered this way, out and up, and this one's more of a rounded shape. So this round shape is very reminiscent of this round shape, round shape in the tip that is. And this one makes a great concealer brush as well for around the eye, around the face. You really can't have unblended concealer if you use this brush with it. Unfortunately, this undyed version is only available in a set. But I would say that if you don't um, don't have the eye brushes available in a set, and you're interested in the face brushes, I would definitely get it. This brush um, almost makes the set alone worth it. But that's just speaking loosely. This brush before I got the Jumbo Blender, it was one of my favorite under eye concealing brushes because it just puts it on so nicely. Well, I say one of my favorites because this one's my favorite, but I used it for a while, I think like three weeks straight be between washes as my under eye concealing brush of choice. And then I kind of had to decide, did I want to de-stash one of these brushes? And then I decided, 
No, because Sonia G just des uh, designed these brushes to be dyed and undyed because they were to serve different functions. So I want to test that out on camera, see how differently they apply different products. Maybe I will decide that the difference is minimal enough that one of them's not worthy of being kept. But if I did, it would probably be the dyed one because I'm kind of biased toward undyed. So I'll have to compare them side by side to see if the difference is worth the keep or not. And then we have these sort of fat blenders. Compare these to the more, or the fat shaders. Compare these to the more thin shaders I had in the beginning. So the builder one, I would consider a thin shader. You can see it comes to here versus the fat shaders kind of stay flared out. So the Worker 3 is a fat shader. The Makeup Cat 114 is another fat shader. And it's just, just your sort of very typical brush. This is the Koyudo Konomi. Where are you? This, this is made of horse. Oh, no. This is the Koyudo Somo, Somel Garden Konomi eyeshadow brush. So this one, these two are being kept and this one's being de-stashed because as a large fluffy shader, this one's too big for my eyes and this one's almost bordering on too big, which is surprising. Well, actually not that surprising considering my favorite shader brushes are flat because they have less surface area. But this one is a great brush. It's horse, but it's like really soft horse. And I would recommend <laughs> this brush to almost everybody except for the ones with the most sensitive skin. Um, it does apply color stronger than the Workers 3. This one, if you use a dark shadow, you do have to be careful to take it off on the back of your hand first before you go in, blend, and apply. This one is more layerable, so safer choice, faster choice. Otherwise, these are pretty much interchangeable for me, even though the sizes are slightly, um, this one's probably 20% more in volume. Or, okay, bump that up to 30%. It's late at night. I can't do math. And then we move on to the elongated brushes. So these are kind of your typical blenders. If these brushes are the ones you apply color with, then blend out. These are the color, these are the brushes that you can also apply color with and then blend out. You just get a little bit more precision because of the shape difference. These are more square cut. These are more oval cut. So I have these brushes, these longer blender brushes split into two different sizes, medium and small. So medium, I don't think there's anything more classic than a MAC 217. This is one of the original ones uh, manufactured in Japan and it's a really shallow imprint on the handle here. I'm not even sure if the camera can pick it up. But uh, I prefer the MAC 217 to the Hakuhodo J5523 because the 5523 is a little bit bigger, longer, and it doesn't quite have as rounded of a tip. So when it comes to classic medium-sized blending brushes, I do prefer the 217. This brush here is the, one of the Hakuhodo brushes from the Autumn Smoky um, set. And this is the G5523 if it was in the permanent one. The difference between Squirrel and Goat is Squirrel flares out a lot less. So I have a lot more control with the Squirrel version of the 5523 than I do with the Goat version of the 5523. I'm a little bit of... Um, annoyed when the 5523 kind of like flared out a lot unless I put a guard on it. Normally I don't put brush guards on my eye brushes so that kind of annoyed me a bit so that's why I de-stashed that one but I kept the 217. Because the 217 due to this tapering rounded tip keeps its shape better. Speaking of keeping its tip shape, the T7, surprisingly for the square tip, does keep its shape well, but I've just decided that I don't prefer this shape. So I'm going to be de-stashing the T7. And this is how it compares to the sort of shorter squatter, what I call the shader 
blender brushes versus the blender brushes. So this one is more square overall in shape and this one's more of an elongated rectangle. This is the Stelazi Medium Shadow L222 Sable. This was in my Kalinsky Sable Weasel Brush video. And this one was pretty nice when I had it and I hadn't collected all of my Kalinsky brushes yet, but I'm pretty ready to let this one go. It's lumped in here with the blender brushes because of this thick fatness to the tip. Works great with the Maybelline Color Tattoo Shadows because they're pretty, multi-dimensional so I pick up a bunch of color and then I put it on my eyes and as I keep stroking the color changes towards the edges because it buffs out as it applies and goes along. However that effect is pretty well duped by this brush the Tanzedo 12 KQ12 so I don't need this brush anymore. And then we have the squirrel brushes. So this one is kind of on the verge of medium small. So let's talk about the medium Koyudo eye brush first. It has the lovely diamond taper. I don't know what else to say about it besides it's great for doing one eyeshadow looks. You might want a larger brush like this Ihodo S1 to lay down a base first and then do your more detailed shading work with these small brushes here. Um, a great pairing within the own brand is, of course, the Hokoto uh, GS1 and GS2, large one for putting down base color, the medium side for putting down the lid color, and then this one for the outer, t uh, outer corner, inner corner, and also kind of just lining the eyes with eyeshadow. You can't quite wing out the tip with this one like you can with this one because tips a little bit more rounded. Don't know if you can see that well. And then we move on to the small eye brushes. GA04 and GSN7 from Chukoda are the exact same brush head on different length handles. I'll be destashing the short one. So now we're left with the KZ07 and a GSN9. Both from Chikahodo, uh, one is Cotton Squirrel, one is Gray Squirrel. The Cotton Squirrel one does feel softer, and the Gray Squirrel one does feel more firm. That being said, the Cotton Squirrel one is more flexible at the tip here. And then this one is less flexible at the tip. So one of them will feel hard. So this one, one of them will feel harder than the Cotton Squirrel one, but they're both pretty soft. And if you have sensitive eyes, you really can't go wrong with either one. The gray squirrel one will apply color more opaquely and true to pan color though. So if you wanna pick something that applies color the way you see in the pan, pick this one. If you wanna pick a, if you want a brush that's better at layering, I would go for the WS2 or the KZ07. I mean, not WS2. GS2. I'm not sure why, because Canadian Squirrel, in theory, should apply color stronger than the Gray Squirrel, but it might have something to do with the build shape. This one's more round and fluffed out at the tip than the GSN9. So this applies color a little bit more gently and with a little bit more control over layering. This one, pretty much how you pick it up is how it's going to go down. And unless you like specifically take the tip to blend out the edges you won't really get a nice gradation of different colors and tones of complex eyeshadows. So out of these small eye brushes my favorites are the KZ07 and the GS2. And wow that was all of my Pavel eye brushes. I had the most difficulty sorting this category because I really wanted to sort them by shape and by function. I don't know if you noticed but when I was doing my paddle eye brushes, I kind of sorted them, you can see approximately by fragile and powder only to more hardy and capable of handling cream and powder textures. So now the only video I have left to do is my eyeliner, eyebrow and lip brushes, and that should be a fairly short one. So there were some surprises in actually how much I got rid of 
or how much I'm de-stashing from these paddle eye brushes. But I feel like all of these are really justified in going because they're either something I don't really reach for or enjoy using as much, like this WQ12. I'm sure somebody who loves sheer eyeshadow will love it, but it's just not for me. If I want a sheer eyeshadow, I would go for the S1, GS1, the Red Squirrel brush, or heck, if I want a sheer eyeshadow, the sheer eye brush. <laughs> so I have a lot of options I would go for. And this definitely can't handle cream shadows, which is why it's kind of out. So if I wanted to apply a cream shadow on my eye, I would pick up the Worker 3. And I don't really like the Worker 2 as much for cream shadow. Probably has something to do with how much the tip spreads. And because the tip is tapered, it's more flexible than this rounded tip on the Worker 3. So... If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'm sorry this was such a long video. There were a lot of brushes to get through. And I will see you guys on Friday. I will be filming on uh, Hakuhodo, probably doing either the J series or the G series. Both of those series are pretty big, so I'm pretty sure I'm only going to cover one of them. And if you have any requests for things you would like to see Hakuhodo-wise while I'm at the showroom, throw me some requests. I already have some people asking for demos and comparisons of specific brushes so I would be happy to put that on my list of things to do and try to squeeze it in for you while I'm there. So thank you for watching and sticking out to the end. I'm really grateful that people are interested in watching me go through all my brushes and I will see you guys all next time and hopefully it's not late where you are like it is where I am. Everybody else is asleep. <laughs> So that's why maybe if I'm speaking a little softer or the sound's a little bit more funny, I have my mic positioned differently and I'm trying not to talk in my normal tone and volume. Right. Probably just clean up these brushes a bit. Actually, since I'm in no rush today, I will put these brushes away in my brush case and kind of show you how I organize them. So if you haven't gotten the memo, this video is kind of pretty much over. It's just me messing around with brushes now. So this is a makeup case I got uh, a couple years back. A couple years back at the makeup show. And then I have skincare in the bottom compartments and then I have my brushes up in the top compartments here. So I've already packed away my red, my red, my round eye brushes, and then I'm gonna try to squeeze all my other brushes in. So I'm gonna start with the big ones. So these are kind of my face slash eye brushes, and you just slot them in. The Velcro is catching. That's not good. Okay. Um Put these away here. These are the large eyeshadow, Canadian eyeshadow brushes. Actually, I think I'll put them up here because they're large. 
you count it as a face brush. So you're going up here, large eye brushy. Okay, I grouped these guys together. So you're going here, blender, 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 blender. <laughs> Actually, hmm. Okay, this one's gonna go with these guys because these are my sort of under eye concealer brushes versus my spot concealing around the face brushes. So, concealer brushes here. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely gonna put all the paddles together, all these flat paddles. I really hope the smudges on the handles aren't showing up on the camera because. Some of them are kind of dingy and gross. <laughs> Should probably clean them a little better. Okay, this one I think is sufficiently big enough to go with the big boys. And there we go. That's the oh, 2070. And the squirrel brushes. I'll take care of you guys later. Here, here, and we are quickly reaching max capacity in that. Put all the squirrel, medium squirrel brushes here. This is sort of the delicate pocket. Okay, I think I can squeeze one more in there. Yes, yes I can. Uh, I don't know, should you go with the Kalinsky or should you go with the squirrel? I'm gonna be nice and put you with the squirrel. Okay, large, large eye brush, medium, large eye brush, medium, large eye brush. Uh, and I still have like two more boxes here to go, so this might be fun <laughs> trying to squeeze all my brushes in. Uh, mental gymnastics for sure. Oops, geez, that was loud. Okay, let's put this there. And then the reason why organizing by shape and usage is so important is because when I pick out my brush rotation for the week, I go one, 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 one. And that's how I pick out my brushes to use for the week. Well, actually, these are my de-stash brushes, so I don't have to worry about these guys. Never mind. Oh, you're a de-stash. Get back over there. Okay. <laughs> and this, this might get a little difficult. Okay, so I think I'll move these because they're round blenders. These are the small round blenders, and I'm going to move and put them up with the medium sized blenders. So the small blenders are the one like the Flat Shoe MR 5R, the Koyudo BP 036, the Mini Booster, the Hakodo 5529, and the medium blenders are the Sonia G Crease one, the Hakuhodo S142 black version, Ishikuda A23. So I'll put the round blender brushes together even though they're different sizes, which kind of hurts my soul, but I'm not sure you know. Put the small ones, I'll put them here because these bullet brushes are obviously very distinguishable from the small blender brushes. So if I'm picking, I won't get confused. Or if I'm picking quickly, rather, I won't get confused. And then now I can stick these pencil brushes here. Oh, this is kind of why I dislike the Sonia G big, big handles, because they kind of take up space, unnecessary space in my storage. But that's a me problem. Okay, that's max capacity. Da -da -da, round blunders. This might get a little difficult. Okay. Small eye brushes, not too many of these. This one's going back in my makeup kit, so I don't have to worry about this one for now. More eye brush. What else do we have? Small eye brushes. This is a small eye brush. 
<laughs> Your flat eye brushes. So I'm going to put flat eye brushes here with you. Okay. So we, we might we might have to move some things. Okay. These are about the same type of build, so let's keep these together. Now the question is where to put, okay, we have these blenders here, the round doe foot blenders. We only have three of those. We have these here, so let's put the big, big blenders in with them because there's only three of them. And I won't get the shapes confused and they're all squirrel, except for that one, which is pony and synthetic. So that's, okay, I'm pretty satisfied with that. Now we've got more space there. Hmm. I'm gonna stick some more Kolinsky brushes in here. Can I? No? Okay. This one. Small eye brush goes here. Okay. Small, small. Ah, big fat handle. Okay. Uh that's not gonna fit. I'll put it next door, which really bugs me, but it's necessary. Otherwise, it's going to probably break the pocket. We have these super flat brushes here. I should probably put them with the concealer brushes. Yes, that's a good idea. OK, that still fits. Um, these brushes go together, this brush goes with that one, this brush definitely goes with that one. So, the question is, where do I put them? <laughs> Oops. Let's just go for the most obvious place now. Here we go. And now these sort of outlier brushes. So we have these two medium paddles. They're thin enough that I will put them here. I don't want this one disappearing into the abyss. I'm going to pull this one up a little bit more. There goes the Sabomi. And Perfectionist Brush. Probably here. Okay, second thought. I might that might not fit so well there. So I will be keeping this one, this one. Where's the Sonia G? These together. If I was to put this one in here, it would go here. Big ass eye brush goes here. Sorry, I start swearing when it gets late at night. My filter turns off. Mm, where the heck did I put these guys? Aha, uh -huh, here. Medium, small, smallish, medium blenders. Let's see. What do I have in here? Maybe I'll move this one because it's a round brush technically over here. Since this one already has a weird triangle shape. Okay. Now that seems like a good fit. Because these are now all paddle brushes. And then... No. Nah. <laughs> yeah, this one goes back here because it's definitely a face brush. I guess my D-stash wasn't that successful after all because the point of it was to make space enough that I could, well, have space to put brushes, all of my brushes in the case when they were clean. Uh, it's not working so well. Okay, those are round blender brushes. I can't do anything with them. I still have just a small handful. 
Okay, this one's so weird. I can't forget that I put it here. So, putting it here. Will it fit? Oh no, don't tell me it doesn't fit. Okay, it fits. There's just something down there blocking it. Wait, what, what, what's blocking it? No, okay, nothing. Just didn't want to go in, in that orientation. Uh, T6, maybe the, nah, the T6 is sort of my, one of my face brushes. So I think I'll move this one out, this Surat brush out. And while I'm at it, maybe move that one out because these are all round brushes. This one's like halfway between a round and a paddle. This is the T6 and it really bugs me that I have no exact place to put it. Okay, so I'm gonna organize this a little bit. Actually, you're a flat paddle. You should be here. You're a flat, tough little paddle. You, got, you should be there. Okay, you guys, you guys are together. Okay. I do have a little bit of black city there, but these are all squirrel. I kind of want to keep that all squirrel now. Okay. I can move you here because big squirrel brush with big squirrel eye brushes makes sense. Tough, tough, pretty tough, not tough, pretty tough. Not tough, eh, sort of tough. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll stick you there. Uh, oh, I forgot about this one. This one definitely goes here. It was hidden in a little corner behind the shadow. So, didn't see it. All right. Um, I think you're fit to go here if you'll fit. No, you're, you're, you're not gonna fit? Okay, scratch that plan. These are paddles, these are rounds. Okay, you're going with the rounds. Sorry, even though these are more of the dome-shaped ones, this one's more of a pointed-shaped one, so this one goes here. I know, I'll go to sleep soon. I'm almost done, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like 10 minutes from done. Oh, okay. This one goes here. Actually, maybe this one can squeeze in. That, nope, okay. That's not happening. Mm -hmm. Well, you, even if you miss the beginning, you can still ask your questions in the comments and I'll answer them. So, there's that. Hmm. What to do with these guys? Okay, I'm kind of at a loss. Okay, these are sort of the weird shape blending brushes combined with the big fat fluffy petals. <laughs> I feel like I feel like I should just move, remove the Kalinsky brushes, put them in their own box, because that's what I was doing before I did my D stash. Okay, that frees up a lot of space. Ah, to heck with it, right? Okay. All the Kalinsky comes back out. That's better. Or all the Kalinsky paddles, anyway. Horse stays. Hot shader brushes. Okay, so these are more medium medium thickness brushes. This is thinnest. Mm, pretty thin. I'm gonna stick you right there. There, there, there. Pretty big fluff. Anything here. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, big fluff, big fluff, big petal fluff. Also pretty big. Pretty, pretty thin, big fluffies. This one's on the border. No, this one's fluffier. <laughs> you are the thick petal. Where did I stick this one? Or where did I stick the Sigma one? Huh, kind of lost track. Let's see over here. Oh. Okay. Everything will be okay. I will find it eventually. That's so weird. Okay, synthetic brush. Where would I have put that? That's all the Canadian squirrels, pine squirrel. Grab this one. Stick it here, gray squirrel, fox goat. So these are the gray squirrels, and this is a gray squirrel. Hmm. Now leave this one with the face brushes. Where should you go? I really don't know where I put the Sigma synthetic shader. This is gonna bug me for a while, isn't it? Oh, there it is. Okay. I will put you guys together. I just don't know where I'm gonna put you guys yet. Okay, so these are all the Canadian squirrels. Minus the small ones over here. Hmm. Oh well, these are weird enough that I'll know they're not squirrel. So I'll stick them here. And that is how I madly organize my brushes. So I can kind of tell at a glance, this is the face, face sized um, eye brushes. These are complexion for concealer and whatnot. These are my Canadian squirrel brushes, gray squirrel, and uh, sh strong shading brushes for foiling. Big fluffy brushes, fat blenders, uh, fat blenders continued, but squirrel, weird, weird shaped blending brushes, uh, round shaped blending brushes, bullet brushes, long round blending brushes, medium blending brushes, pencil brushes, medium shaders plus okay i'm going to put this packing brush over here because there's just not enough room in this pocket for it. small eye brushes and that's it done and all my kaminsky brushes are going to be in a separate box see you next time bye